Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. What I have here is the PinePhone, an early developer edition of the PinePhone. Today I want to do an unboxing and give you my first impressions. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So the idea of the PinePhone is to take the ideas that you find in, let's say, the uh, single board computers that Pine make, like the Rock Pro 64, and bring that over into the world of smartphones. So it's much more open. You can develop for it yourself. There are lots of different varieties of OS that you can download and install on it. But as I said, this is a developer edition, very much an early entry into this program. And that's why it's even called the Brave Heart Edition, because you need to be brave of heart to kind of tackle this thing. Having said that, while it's not a consumer product, it is fully working. You do get the touch screen and the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth and the cellular modem and the camera, and it's all there and you can play with it and use it and start to develop touch-based operating systems on this smartphone format. So let's go ahead and unbox it and then we'll see what else we will do. Okay, so here we are. I've resisted opening this until now so that I could do it on camera. Pretty simple uh, white box. Let's lift off the lid. A bit of foam there in the top for protecting during package. Oh, little letter here it looks like. What does it say? Dear Piner, congratulations on receiving your Braveheart Edition Pine Phone. You're one of the very first to have a Pine Phone. We hope you'll help us and our partner projects by contributing to its development. And there's lots more there. I'll read that, that later. But here is the device itself. Let's just see. Okay, well, okay, nothing else in the box. Yes, this container has come out. That means it's pretty well fixed in here, which is good, I suppose. Okay, so what have we got? We've got a cable. What type of cable is this? Let's have a quick look. USB-C cable, but no power brick. So you have to provide your own brick. Okay, and now the phone itself. Let's do this. There we go. There is the phone itself. What have we got on the back here? Uh, the Pine logo, a camera, and a flash. This would probably be the speaker grill. We've got the USB-C port, a hole, looks like the microphone. Volume and power buttons. Headphone jack, hooray, a headphone jack. Uh, and then that's it. Where would the SIM card go? That would be an interesting question. I have to look into this. Okay, so there we go. So I'm now going to turn it on and uh, see if it's got any battery and I'm gonna have a play with it and then I'll come back. Doesn't look like there's any battery. No, it's not switching on. So I'll charge it up and then have a play and we'll have a look at what it's like. Okay, having turned the camera off, I did realize one thing, and that is, and I haven't seen a phone like this for a long, a long time, you can actually pull the back off. So there you go. That is, of course, uh, brilliant for a development phone. Actually, maybe it's brilliant for all phones. That's a whole different discussion. And, of course, there's this bit of plastic here, which is why the battery was not even working. So I don't know whether it's charged or not, but we can pop that out of there. We can pull away this bit of plastic there, and then we can pop this battery uh, back in like that. There are some dip switches here. I'll go into this when I uh, look at the phone greater in depth. Uh, so let's put that back on there now like this. Okay, clicks way around. Wow, this is this is such a throwback, but I f fully understandable for a, a development phone like this. And now let's see if it will switch on, whether that battery had anything in it. Still doesn't look like it does. So we'll go back to charging it. But um, that was, where, so where's the SIM card? Go? Oh no, there's a green light, come on. Let's see what's happening. Where'd the SIM card go? I said in a moment ago, where's that come in? Of course, where it goes on, of course, is um, in the back there when you take the cover of Postmarket OS. Let's see what comes up here now. Okay, so what we've got is the factory uh, testing uh, thing. So for example, you can press the speaker button here. Front left, it's Front, saying. Left. Front left. Front left. Front left. Okay, and then it asks you, did you hear that? Okay, yes, I did. And you can test, for example, the vibration motor. Yes, I can feel that. That's actually working. That's actually vibrating it, uh, there. So I can say, yes, I heard that. And there are all the different tests that you can do to make sure that the phone is actually working. Okay, so we need to install an OS on this. So I'll go ahead and charge it some more and do that. And then we'll see what else I can discover. 
So talking about operating systems, there are a variety of different operating systems available for the Pine phone. Uh, some of them, many of them are based on Linux, but you also get other ones, for example, is one based on WebOS. So there's things like Sailfish, there's Ubuntu Touch, and many, many others. Now I'm gonna install Ubuntu Touch. That's really kind of the first one that I want to try on this. And in other videos, I will be looking at the other varieties that are available to see which ones are in the best state of development. But for now, we'll go with Ubuntu Touch. Okay, I got the OS installed. You basically just copy it over the image onto the micro SD card, pop the micro SD card into the phone and then boot it up. I've got Ubuntu Touch, so we can go away here. And it, in this sense, it's like a desktop. You know, I've got a login box. They tell you the default uh, password is Fablet. Let's see if I can type that in without making a mistake here. Okay, and so now here we have uh, Ubuntu Touch. We can do, for example, we can open up ourselves a, um, a terminal here just to see that we are running kind of full uh, unix here a touch version and then up comes a terminal we need to open up a keyboard and then we can do something like top you know to look at the processes that are running okay and there we have it now you can see here it's got two gigabytes of ram and there's about 800 megabytes free uh, after we've it's all been booted up and everything now obviously this is just one OS you can install on this and I will be doing more videos covering all the different OS's that can run on this and how they work okay so there you have it the uh, pine phone early developer edition uh, it's really interesting to use I'm quite excited about using it myself kind of as a developer as an enthusiast really being able to get into the kind of the the innards of this thing however my first impressions beside all the fact that it's the developer edition is that this can be quite slow we're only dealing with a quad core Cortis A53 CPU and two gigabytes of RAM. And there have been lots of occasions where I've kind of had to keep tapping on something before it kind of gets picked up or maybe it was picked up, but it's been slow, slow to react. So that can be a bit frustrating, it's like using a Raspberry Pi 3 inside of a smartphone. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one.